What's good, YouTube? It's Mirror Boy Squiddy back in with another video. Today, I want to talk about some cards that have been kind of forgotten throughout the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, but I think they might have some relevancy in the metagame again now that it's shaping up. You know, we got YCS Philly coming around the corner and potential ban list, fingers crossed, in time for Nationals. So yeah, let's dive in and talk about some obscure cards that I think could be relevant in the metagame. Starting off with Shared Ride, this is a card that actually side decked in my purely deck for the previous regionals that happened last week. And essentially how this works is you would chain it to the adding effect that your opponent activates and then you get to draw a card. So for the rest of the turn, each time a card is added from the main deck or graveyard to your opponent's hand, except by drawing them, you may immediately draw one card. So it's kind of like a maxi for whenever your opponent adds. And you guys may have remembered that this card was previously playable in a lot of um, formats that were almost tier zero, like the Sky Striker mirror match or the Necroz mirror match where cards were constantly being added. And it just acted as a, another copy of maxi in those formats. And I think that this card could be marginally good because a lot of decks are adding right now. If we know that Super Heavy Samurai obviously adds a bunch. There's also Kashira. They're using like Pot of Prosperity. They're using Kashira Field Spell. They're using all the Kashira effects to add cards as well. And then against Purely's, actually all the Purely effects that excavate three cards from the top of their deck count as them adding from the deck to the hand. So in the Purely matchup, it was really, really nice in the Mirror match, especially because you're essentially locking your opponent from using the effects. If they use the effects of purely, then you're drawing a card each time that they add a card to their hand, so they're going neg. So they're kind of forced in an awkward state where they have to make a Zeus push and are not able to use their engine. And I really like this card because I think it going first, it can be sided against basically every deck in the format right now because everything adds for their starter. So having shared ride as a blanket effect kind of creates an awkward situation for them where they either they have to try and kill you by adding a bunch in the case of Super Heavy Samurai, but then you can also draw into your other hand traps, which is why I really liked it in the Purely deck, because in theory, Purely, you get another turn then you're probably gonna win after you establish Noir, right? Like if they get rid of the Noir, you use the effect of My Friend Purely, you add back three quick play spell cards, and then if you have Shared Ride, you flip it, so they're under the effect of Shared Ride, you draw a bunch of cards, they can either try and push for game, but then you might draw into hand traps, like Valier, Nib, so on and so forth, or they can just pass, which puts them in an awkward board state because their board's not very good, and you have a bunch of advantage accrued in your hand already from the My Friend Purely, so you're able to kill them anyways on your following turn. And the reason I like this actually better than Drone Lockbird going first is because of the fact that it's not a neg one. The issue with Drone Lockbird is that it's a hard neg one. It's only truly good against Super Heavy Samurai, in my honest opinion, because I just don't feel like it's good in the other matchups. For example, in the Purely Mirror match, you don't want to neg one on a card. It's a lot grindier. It feels like the Pure Zoo mirror match. So you're going droll. Sure, you might stop them, but they have a plethora of other plays that still threaten your board. They're able to make Zeus, for example. They have a bunch of hand traps in their grip. And then on your turn, you're kind of down one card and you have to deal with what cards they have already. So you're kind of going neg. So I don't like Droll Knockbird a lot, to be honest. But Shared Ride is nice because you're at least replacing itself on the activation, because ideally you're gonna be chaining this to the effect that adds. So if you chain this to a field spell cast hero that adds a monster, you're gonna be able to draw a card, and then you're already not down into resources, and it creates a blanket effect that gives you pro benefits for the rest of the turn. So it's like a free benefit where you're gonna draw additional cards each time your opponent um, adds a card from their deck to their hand, and you've already replenished the shared ride that you lost. So you're not down any card advantage. So I really like this card for th that matter. You guys should definitely test this going first in your side deck if you haven't already. It's obviously not as good going second, but in certain matchups like purely, I think it could uh, potentially be good going second because you're able to kind of create like a grind game board state anyways in the mirror match. So it might be decent to be able to break their board and then set this and activate it. Um, alternatively, you could also use it sometimes going second when your opponent adds cards back from the graveyard to their hand. So things like my friend purely, for example, just to get a hard draw off of it as an upstart goblin but uh yeah this is a card that i think should see some play moving on let's talk about an obscure card this is called typhoon you guys are gonna think i'm crazy for this one but this is an older hand trap it's literally a trap like impermanence that happens to activate in the hand and what it does is target one face up spiral trap on the field destroy it that's a regular trap effect if you flip it on your field but the added benefit of this card is if your opponent controls two or more spiral traps and you control no spiral trap cards you can activate this card from your hand so this actually did see some marginal play i think in some pendulum format in the mirror metaphors uh, in that matchup because you could actually blast your scales um, I think it could have some crossover here. Against Super Heavy Samurai, this is kind of weird, but they rely on the Pendulum Summon to kick off the rest of their uh, full combo. Generally, like their generic combo just ends on a Baron, and then they set up the scales and Pendulum to make their uh, actual push to establish the board. 
but this card can actually be used when they activate the Wakaoshi and the scale along with the super uh, heavy samurai monk Benkei. So when they have those set up, you can actually activate Typhoon from the field. And although Baron's probably going to negate it, we have to face the facts. Like against super heavy samurai, you often need two or more hand traps anyways. So what Typhoon is actually acting as is a copy of a second hand trap that baits the Baron. And then you're able to use your other hand trap or so on and so forth. Or if you happen to bait the Baron earlier, then Typhoon just gets clutch value because you're blasting their pendulum monster and then they're probably not going to be able to pendulum summon for the rest of that turn unless they happen to hard draw a copy of wakoshi or the big monk benkei so kind of like tailored to see what your opponent added if they added a second copy of wakoshi you obviously pop the big monk benkei and vice versa so i thought this card could have some marginal utility and then against other matchups that play floodgates like there can be only one skill drain you can just use this as a regular dust tornado to pop those cards and then on top of all of that i just think that this card could also be nice against Cashera if they happen to activate Field Spell and then they activated Birth. You can actually just chain this to Birth to pop the Birth that comes out of nowhere and it kind of gets rid of the Birth there. And it also works under Arise Heart because of the fact that uh, uh, Ghost Stoker has to send the hand to the graveyard, for example. So it's just like a unique card. I'm not saying it's the best card in the world to side, but it's a potential option for you guys to play around. See if this is a card that maybe can catch your opponent off guard. And again, the nice thing is that you actually, uh, it's not hard once per turn, so you can play multiples of these if you drew them. But again, like in permanence, you have to activate them once on a chain because when this is on your field, you technically control Spell Trap, so you can't chain um, them on top of each other. But just a cool thing to note. Speaking of hand traps, let's talk about Heavenly Zephyr Miradora. This is a hand trap that was printed originally, and I don't think it ever saw play, but it's available in a gorgeous Starfoil rarity already, which is pretty cheap on TCG Player. It's like 60 or 70 bucks, which I thought was kind of cool. But this card might actually have some utility here, okay? Guys, hear me out. It's a level 7 dragon, and the effect is the effect and activation of this card's effects cannot be negated. So that's the first line of the card, which is kind of nice. Unfortunately, the rest of the text is kind of specific. It says, if your opponent special summons a monster with 2k or more attack from the extra deck, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand, and then the ignition or the trigger effect when summoned is, if this card is special summoned from the hand, you can target one face-up opponent's monster that was special summoned from the extra deck. Neither player can activate that monster's effects while this monster is face-up on the field. So again, against cards like Baron De Fleur, against cards like Borlo Savage Dragon, they actually cannot negate this. So the minute that they special summon Baron from their extra deck, you can actually go effective Miradora, reveal it, negate the Baron, and they can't negate and pop because of the effect of Miradora, which prevents that from happening. So now you have a Miradora that's pinning down their Baron, they can't use the effect, and um, they can't use the effect to pop either because, again, you can't activate any of the effects. And it's nice because I don't think Super Heavy Samurai actually has a lot of good removal options besides the Baron, so they might actually have this chill on your field, and then on your turn it already did its job. It did its job by negating the Baron, and on top of that you actually have a body on board that's a level 7, so you can continue to make your plays. Um, you can potentially get rid of the Baron, break their board, and then use Miradora with a level 3 hand trap synchro, for example, to synchro into your own Baron Defleur if you're playing a deck that uh, has that line. So this is just a cool thing that I thought... And the nice thing is that it's a dragon, so it's actually searchable with Bistil Magnema, which is kind of cool as well in the end phase or in a grind game situation. And the other thing is, this actually does work against Expert Lenore, I asked in the Judges Lound. Unfortunately, they can chain the effect of Expert Lenore to detach two to send this to the bottom of your deck, but that just baits out the Expert Lenore, so they only have three materials left, ideally. Now, the way this card actually works is... Um, neither player can activate that monster's effect that you target. So it actually doesn't affect XP nor it affects the player. So they would not be able to activate it. Similarly, it would work against uh, Chaos Angel and also Psychic and Punisher as well because it's affecting the owner of the card as opposed to the actual card itself. So as long as Mirador is on the field pinning down either of those cards, then they cannot actually activate. But in the case of XP nor they can chain the effect as a quick effect and then they can target Mirador to spin it to the bottom of your deck, which is not a negate effect, right? So Mirador cannot do anything against that unfortunately but i just think it's a really really cool concept that could see some value so if you guys want to test this card out definitely uh see if you can fit it in and then let's talk about some traps that are going first summon limit this is a card that was very very toxic in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! and i was cited at some points in the format 
Honestly, it should probably just be banned. It's a pseudo vanity's emptiness that says neither player can summon more than twice per turn, and it actually counts the summons while it's face down. So if you wait for your opponent to normal summon a monster and then special summon another monster, you can actually flip summon limit and it pins them down even though it was face down, which is kind of uh, absurd in my opinion, but that's just how Konami ruled it. So this card could actually be sided going first, and it's very versatile against a lot of decks. It might not be great against Kashira because Fenrir can obviously get rid of it, but against cards like uh, decks like Super Heavy Samurai, they're obviously not going to be able to do anything. And against decks like Purely, even they might not be able to do anything either because they can't make Zeus. They can kind of chill there with two Purely's or like a Purely plus an XYZ and not do much else. So this is just another unique card that maybe you guys should consider trying to side in your deck because it's a very very powerful blowout card that uh, not a lot of decks can actually deal with. Different Dimension Ground is another card that I had against Super Heavy Samurai, and what it does is it's a blanket effect. Again, blanket effects are very broken in Yu-Gi-Oh! if used properly to your advantage. And it says that this turn, any monster sent in the graveyard is banished instead. So it actually banishes. It acts as a one-sided, well, two-sided, but ideally you would have already set up your board, set this, and then activate this. And it's basically a one-sided shifter because your opponent cards will always be banished, so any Super Heavy Samurai like Soul Piercer is not going to hit the grave this turn. One thing to note is that actually XYZ materials, when they're attached as monsters, actually count as XYZ material and would still be sent to the graveyard and not banished. It's kind of like the ruling with D Fissure and Macrocosmos, so different Dimension Ground would not banish those, but the rest of the cards will actually be sent to the graveyard, where when it matters, would be banished. So like Super Heavy Samurai Soul Pierce are trying to link, for example. So it's kind of a nice blanket effect. There's not really any counterplay. Um, I think this card could definitely be something that could meander its way into your side of going first. Uh, so definitely consider that. And then the last card I kind of want to briefly talk about was Solemn Strike. I know a lot of people have forgotten about this card, but I think there could be some utility in the right deck. It's very nice because it negates the special summon of a monster or the monster effect. So any of the cast heroes, you can chain to Fenrir, chain to Unicorn, pop it. Uh, you can actually use it on hand traps as well to negate the activations in the hand. So grinding board state is also very relevant. Unfortunately, you do have to pay 1500 life points, which is a little steep. But I think it could be worth the trade-off. Like, it's a very, very powerful one-sided card against the Pyrrhalis. It gets rid of the body as well. Um, unfortunately, if you use it against the Zeus summon, they can special summon another Zeus because with the new rules update, it actually doesn't consider negated summons to have been attempted. So they can still summon another copy of a Heart or Zeus if they tried to special summon that on top of a monster using the built-in effect. But I just think that this card could have some utility. It's very, very versatile. And maybe it's the time that Strike sees the Resurgence going first. So... Yeah, that's about it. If you guys like this, definitely let me know if there are any other cards that we missed that we want to talk about that people are missing. But otherwise, give these cards a try. Let me know if they're good, and I'll see you guys in the next video.